Hey gang, it's Jay and we're on a property patrol. So this brings up the question, why do we do patrols? What are our patrolling considerations? I really think, and there's a huge, huge misconception out there amongst the masses, I think, that I don't, I don't know if folks understand the purpose of the patrol. Obviously, there's multiple reasons for conducting a patrol. But in this case, for a patrol, the reason for it is for gathering information. The scenario we're using on this, and this is part of our patrol series, this is the second part of our patrol series on patrolling considerations, is why? So, the scenario that we're going to play out here is we're six months in on whatever grid down scenario there is. Grid down, world war, civil war, whatever it may be. Things have come to a screeching halt. So why are we doing this? Hopefully, you have a mutual aid group or a mutual assistance group. Bug out location. Hopefully, by this point, you've gotten out of the city. Um, so let's say our scenario, all right? We're 20 to 30 miles outside of the nearest town. We have our aid group. We have, you know, three to four families, let's say. 100 to 200 acres of land that is yours. How do you keep it? How do you prevent people from, that you don't know from coming into it? Because let's think about it. You're 20 to 30 minutes outside of town. You're six months in. It's only a matter of time before people start coming, right? You're going to have people who are destitute, who are hungry, sick, scared. But you're also going to have people who mean to do you harm. They want what you have. How do you stop them? How do you know when they're coming? So let's say in this scenario, let's say we know, because we've done area studies, we know our area of operations, and I know right away people are going to be like, oh, you're throwing out the technical, you know, wordage here. No, your area of operations is where you are. That is your property. You should know, and if you don't, shame on you, you should know everything that's going on on your property. Who's coming, who's going, who belongs, who doesn't belong. You need to know this. Beyond your area of operations, you have what's called your area of interest. So that's, in this scenario, is going to be the family farm that way, on the other side of the tracks, who, for scenario purposes, we know there's three families living there in this situation. Down that way, a few miles, we have another family farm, and there's an extended family living there. Those are the only people who should be in this area. So, by doing proper property patrols, you can gather information, knowing who's coming, who's going, what vehicles belong, if vehicles are still running, if there's still gasoline, um, and oil flowing, what do the other properties have defensive measures in place? Who else are they expecting or not expecting? So, your, your patrols are meant to gather that, in, that information, which you can then turn into intelligence. So, let's say in this case, I'm out on, on a patrol, just out for the day, all right? Nothing has been going on, nothing out of the ordinary. But you still need to know what's going on over there. What's going on over there? Is there anything different? Anything out of the ordinary? Maybe you end up doing an overwatch on a property and you notice no activity whatsoever. And there hasn't been activity in a week. What happened? I know I just made a bunch of noise, right? Spooked every deer in, in uh in 50 or 100 yards. Um, 
but you should know what's going on. If something's happened, what happened? Is it a bad guy? Good guy? Maybe the family died from disease, from starvation, whatever. But what happened? Maybe you see smoke in the distance. What's causing it? Something, it can't be good, right? So you need to find out those things. Maybe you've had poaching on the property where, uh, and I'll use this, this happened here a year and a half ago, found a deer past the railroad bed, still on the property, dead, missing its head. What happened? That ain't natural, right? It ain't natural at all. So what happened to it? Obviously, an obvious case of poaching there, okay? I mean, what else can it be? Who the hell's coming onto your property poaching deer? That's a major security issue there. If they're coming onto your property to shoot deer, what else are they willing to do, right? I mean, think about it. So you need, sorry, going through a mud area. So you need to know these things. So if you know, if you find evidence of something, what are you doing? Are you setting up game cams? Are you f doing drone overflies? Are you doing observation posts in those areas? What are you doing to mitigate that? You need to know these things. Hence the reason for a property patrol, right? What's yours is yours and you need to defend it to keep it. Because, let's face it, people are out there up to no good. Up to absolutely no good. They will take what is yours in a heartbeat. You're gonna have ro you're gonna have marauders. You're gonna have ro roaming gangs. You hate to say that um, you hate to say that um, people aren't like that, but they are. So, who is? And here's a great example. Who's using this as a highway? for coming in and out of your property, right? Who's coming? Who's, who crossed your property line to shoot that deer? Who crossed that property line to start sneaking up to the house? Start seeing what you're doing. They're looking for a fight. You're looking to defend. So you're not on the offensive, you're on the defense. So you need to know these things. So anyways, patrolling considerations. You need to have a solid plan. You need to have a defensive plan or a defensive strategy. You need to know your area of operations by doing area studies. Who, what, when, where, why, what's, what's going on? Who belongs, who doesn't? What are the obstacles in place? <clears throat> Things like that. What are seasonal concerns? So all that you need to know. You're not going out looking for trouble. Well, you kind of are, I guess. But you want to identify trouble before it identifies you. So you want to prepare for that. Hence the reason for property patrols. The more you know, the more work you do ahead of time on your property, the easier it's going to be, and the more you're going to have things laid out. You need to be ready. You need to be prepared. So as we go into patrol, so as we go into patrol equipment, we go into setting up patrol bases, things like that. All of these are going to fall into place and make more sense when you have a solid plan in place for what your patrol considerations are. So, anyways, that's what I got. Um, it's pretty straightforward, fair, pretty easy. I know there's people throwing their hands up, hey, wait a second, I got a question. What about this? What about that? Every scenario is different. Everyone's situation is different. What is working for us may not work for you and vice versa. So you really need to put your heads together and decide, hey, what's the plan? So start with your area studies. 
start with identifying those needs and put a plan of action together. So anyways, that's what I got, guys. A um, little bit of rambling there, but I think it's important to have this conversation before you dive into the gear and how you make stuff and, and things like that. You need to have the why figured out first. You need to have those plans in place. So, anyways, that's what I got. I hope it helps. I hope that this starts or lubes a conversation to um, get people thinking about, uh, about the what ifs. And I, I think that's important because we have to have the conversation. It's not all about the cool guy stuff and buying the newest thing and this and that and whatever else is being preached out there. You need to identify this first. This is where the hard work comes in. Identify your needs. Do your homework with your areas. I can't preach area surveys enough. I think it's extremely important. So anyways, that's what I got, gang. You guys take care. Heading back to camp. And uh, yeah, that's it. So you guys, be good. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.